Hi, I'm Anna Olson. This is Insights into Consciousness. You can reach me on my website, AnnaOlsonIntuitive.com. Today, um, I'm going to be doing a show on mediumship and a lot of questions that I get about mediumship. You can also, by the way, access this show on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and LinkedIn under A1R Radio. And you can also download the A1R Radio app on any operating system. Um, you can also access this show, uh, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Google Play, or uh, WBWT 101.5 FM in Greenville, South Carolina. Um, or you can go to askoneradio.com and you'll see my bio there and you can get information on how to get a reading if you call in. Uh I'm also today going to give you information on how to win a free reading by me, a personal free reading, one-on-one with me. I'm really excited to give this away because I, I know that there are people who really want a reading and may not have um, the capability to do that right now. So I'm going to let you know how to do that. You're going to go to AnnaOlsonIntuitive.com. You're going to click on the upper right-hand um, little line thing on the right-hand side, and you're going to just go to my contact information. You're going to send me an email with the word medium in it, and I will enter you into a drawing to win a private reading with me on the phone or video or in person, whichever is most convenient for you or whichever you feel comfortable with. So I'm really excited to talk to you. I'm really excited to give you a reading in person. So, um, today I'm also going to try to take a caller on the show live. This is always done live, and I never know who I'm going to get. It's very uh, hit or miss. Don't know who's calling or what they're calling about. All I know is their first name and where they're from. So, again, a little bit about me. I know I'm pretty new here, so I'd like to just give you a little information on what I do and why I'm here. I am... uh, a lifelong intuitive. I am. Uh, I've been doing this since I was small. I've been able to connect with those who have passed. Had a lot of experiences where I've dreamt about things that are going to happen, or if someone is going to pass. Um, I've also dreamt about that, or I've told people or warned them about accidents, uh, such as car accidents. Um, and a lot of the times, growing up, I've had friends that had the wide-eyed stare at me and. Sometimes they're a little scared, but now um, as an adult, it's been great because a lot of my friends um, are also intuitive. I've been able to find my people um, or people just completely accept that that's the way it is. I'm also a Reiki practitioner and I do space clearings. Again, if you'd like to reach me, my website is www.AnnaOlsonIntuitive.com. You can also read my bio on AskOneRadio.com if you'd like to see a detailed bio of me there. So my topic today is going to be on mediumship. How do I receive messages? This is a really common question, and um, I love to do readings for people. I'm happy to do readings for people. If they feel more comfortable letting spirit come through with me, I am very happy to do so. I love to do it. There's so much healing that goes on. I sometimes end up um, crying so much that I, I'm uh, a little embarrassed but it's because it's a beautiful experience where I feel like heaven touches earth and I'm always happy to do it. I'm always just walking away a better person, having learned more and having experienced more of this beautiful life that way. One of the things that actually happened today was uh, when I did a reading, I was able to uh, see somebody's friend that had passed through a domestic violence situation. So, um, never talked to the person before about any of it. I think we had a brief conversation that she wanted a reading, we scheduled, and that was it prior to the reading. So we start the reading, and she said that she'd like to connect with her friend that died. First thing I saw was it's like a reel of film that goes across my mind's eye. I guess you could say it's kind of like um, if you're having a memory or you're seeing something Um, or recalling something that you saw maybe on a TV show. That's one way to look at it. 
or to explain the experience. You kind of see things in your mind's eye. When I do it, I see things in my mind's eye. So the first thing I saw was her friend being um, assaulted by her husband. And she broke down and cried and said, yes, that's exactly what happened. And she needed some time to catch her her breath. Um, And then, of course, I got teary-eyed because I'm experiencing her grief and her, her tears. But at the same time, I know that it's wonderful because she's healing. And that's really what I want to get at with the mediumship. We... We should never have a bad relationship with the mediumship um, technique. It should be that mediumship is healing. Mediumship is a good experience. You walk away from um, a medium experience feeling healed, getting answers, and feeling more hopeful about your own life and about the person that passed when you're done. Um, another thing that happens with these readings is um, there's a reel. It's almost like a film reel that goes through my mind and I can see everything. I can see the person, how they passed. I see just from connecting with this person's energy on, on the phone or on video or in person. I connect with things that have happened in their lives or the person's life that passed. So most of the time, I can look at it as if I'm watching a movie, but it's more in a reel, kind of like it's passing through on a reel. And I can see it scene by scene as if I'm watching a movie and I can describe the things that I'm seeing to the person. And today I was able to share with the person what their loved one was doing on the other side, um, what their dreams meant about that person. And one thing I wanted to cover specifically is when we have dreams after a person passes, How do we differentiate between a stress dream where we're processing trauma or grief and a dream where we are actually having an interaction with that person, with spirit? This is a very, very good question if anybody's had this question. And I know I've had that question when I was starting out. Most of the time, if the the dream is very stressful, you're waking up in a cold sweat um, or you feel very... Uh, just traumatized um, that's that if you're if you're waking up in a cold sweat you feel like you're processing you're having a bad experience with it or you're very very upset when you have the dream about the past loved one usually that means that your your brain is processing trauma your brain is going through a grieving process which is a normal human reaction it's the same as digesting food or sweating when you get too hot or getting goosebumps when you're too cold. It's what your nervous system does to process an emotional trauma. Usually these dreams are basically upsetting, traumatizing, or intrusive. When you're really connecting with the spirit of your loved one and you've had, you know, even if you've had not not so great of an experience with them or relationship with them in, in your lifetime, it will feel more peaceful, natural, and like they're right there with you. Uh, many people will dream about the person visiting them or being in another place with them. And I could go into the detail about how this happens. There's a lot of things like quantum physics that we know about the universe that scientists are learning more and more about every day. Basically, if, if it's a very vivid dream or you feel very, very strongly after the dream, that was a connection with spirit, with the person in person. So these are things that a lot of people really want to know. So I'd love to cover some of these subjects and these topics so that people can kind of do their own work and people can kind of work on their own intuition so that they can end up having a better relationship with themselves in the way of learning about their higher selves, how they receive messages from spirit, how they connect with their guides, how the how they connect with their own angels, so that, you know, not only do we help them as readers or intuitives, but they can start to learn to trust themselves and learn to do this on their own. And everybody has different gifts, different ways that they've developed their intuition. There's about 12 senses that human beings have. So... We have our five senses. Those are the ones that we're taught in school about, you know, our um, in our science class. Sight, sound, 
taste, smell, the five senses. So those are part of our bodies, and that is very focused on our physical self. So uh, when we when we actually have these intuitions and we think it's kind of amazing, um, to an intuitive, it's more natural. But to a lot of people who are not as learned on how to use your intuition, um, although I believe everybody is to some degree and maybe they've blocked it out or they they weren't listened to when they were younger because their parents were afraid that they'd sound a little out, out there, um, which is understandable. Well, a lot of the times these other 12, these other senses, in addition to the five that add up to 12, they're basically things that you would know right offhand what you have or what you've had more practice with. For instance, um, sometimes people can smell when someone's near, like their grandmother's perfume, and suddenly they'll smell it and they'll know that their grandmother's with them. That's one sense. Um, of course, we know that that is also one of the five physical senses, but that is, that is in addition, a, an intuitive sense. Sometimes when I've done readings, I have lost my eyesight for some time um, because I needed to give a message to the person that I was doing the reading for that they were not losing their vision, that they were having migraines. Uh, or, you know, there's so many different ways spirit comes through. Physical is one of them in all of our five senses. And then there's other senses as well. So in the future, I'm going to delve into those more. But mediumship is one all-encompassing, very deep level of intuition that most people have had some sort of experience with, whether it be going into a building and feeling presence of spirit in some way because maybe somebody had passed there. Or it could be that they had a loved one or a friend pass and they experienced feeling their presence or they seem to be getting symbols or uh, different signs that their loved one was around, such as butterflies, that's a common one, or hummingbirds, birds, things that fly tend to be a good one. Or... Any sort of nature, could be flowers, could be a type of church or certain religion. So the signs and symbols are as vast as they are. the possibilities are just incredible. So these are all little bits and pieces of mediumship. It goes much deeper than that. But basically, what I'd like to touch on is that mediumship is mostly connecting with spirit in a telepathic way. And it's usually not explained by mediums because most people don't understand, but I'd love to explain it a bit, but you're receiving, what it is is you receive messages in pictures, words, smells, and physical senses through spirit as a way of communication when they are no longer in a physical body. And the only way for them to do that with their, their spirit at that point is tele- telepathically. Now, some people hear things as if you know messages from spirit as if they were listening to somebody in the same room and I myself have not had that experience but many people have so this can go many different ways and um, I would also love to delve into it deeper with many people who seem to be interested in developing their gifts as either their mediumship gifts or just asking questions about what does this mean I had this experience. Can you can you help me understand this? So, basically, um, I'd love to get classes going on people for people who want to develop these senses or to make sense out of these senses. It's basically an intuition one on one class, and I'd love to start this uh, online and in person. So, again, I'll be posting these classes, the series, on my website at AnnaOlsonIntuitive.com. And that's where you'll be able to find that in the near future. You can also message me on my website to uh, inquire about these classes. So um, I'd like to take a caller to do a reading real quick, a reading live here. So um, I don't have the name. What is the name? Lori? Lori? Mm-hmm. Hi. How are you? 
Hi. I'm good. How are you? I'm fine. So it looks like we have a few more minutes. Uh, what can I do for you? Um, <clears throat> it seems that a lot of things have been going downhill lately, and I was just wondering when they were going to turn around. Okay. Okay. Um, is there a specific topic that you'd like to focus on? Um, or is it just you want to know, like, the, the universal consciousness? It's just general, like, I've lost mm-hmm. two cars, and it just seems like since then everything's been going downhill. Okay. Was this in the last two months? Yes. <clears throat> okay. Well, this is really interesting that, you know, a lot of people are having a hard time right now. And I know that my last caller last week was also really losing connection with spirit and things like that with her intuition. And and you're touching on, I think, the same thing. We have, um, in in astrology right now, we have many planets in retrograde. In the past two months, we've had the longest eclipse in the 21st century. We've also had five planets in retrograde, including Mercury now in the mid-September range. These things are going to start to straighten out again, and some people feel it a little bit more than others. But I want you to know you're not alone. I've been hearing this in my readings. I've been seeing it all around me. Um, It's not just you. It's not you targeted specifically. This is a universal consciousness, and and it's an ebb and flow of the planetary system and how it affects us and our behavior. Mm -hmm. And it should start to get better mid-September so I know it still feels really heavy right now people have been really dealing with a lot of things emotionally with you know processing trauma processing grief but there's a lot of good that's going to come out of this it's it's kind of like taking a long nap energetically and then you wake up refreshed so that's uh, what happened I took a nap and I woke up and my van got hit and it went down really from there (laughs) oh my goodness okay so you literally took a nap um, I, woke I up literally and never take a nap, but I took a nap, and my husband woke me up and said the van was hit, and I lost two cars in one day, and the things have been cycling oh. down, and and now my daughter's house is, um, the basement was being fixed, and they spread mold through her house, and we're trying to go through a lawsuit with that, and I don't know how that's going to pan out. We have a new baby on board with that, and she's living with us, and I don't know how that's going to pan out, and it's just one thing after another. There's a whole bunch of stuff that happened in the middle of it, which I won't, you know, go into, but it's just every day there's something different. <clears throat> so. Yeah, that that is a good explanation of what people have been experiencing over, especially the last month to two months. So yeah. really, I, I want to give you a little, uh, some hope here that this is going to really straighten out soon and not to worry that this will get better. You're, you, I feel like you are very um, influenced by the planetary goings on the moon how do you feel during full moon do you do you pay attention to that much or oh yeah because usually it's three days before during and after um that things like go on and i and i mm-hmm. do connect to my dreams i can see things that are going to happen like i'll dream about it and it happens or i can tell you like what happened um i can feel people i can tell people about their loved ones i'm connected like mm-hmm. that Mm-hmm. But I just can't seem to get out of this um, funk. Like, it, it seems like this black cloud is just looming over, as I call it. I understand. I, I I hear you. And one way to look at this so that you're, even just on a psychological level to relieve stress, is to look at it um, in a way of, this is a way of processing. And once your processing, uh, your processing period, time period is through, you're going to be able to start new. So as difficult as it is to lose two vehicles that you probably really depend on and you really need in your life, as hard as it is to lose them, the way to look at it um, in this in this scope is to say, what new car do I get? And, you know, um, out with the old, in with the new. Um, you're just going to focus on, you're going to focus on these really positive things that's going to come of these downfalls and these stumbles. So new car, uh, we get to find a new place to live. You know, it's to look forward to the rebirth and to the next chapter. 
And that's really what is happening. It's uprooting the old, it's uprooting the subconscious, it's uprooting all the things that are traumatic. And what we do is look forward to what's coming, the rebirth, okay. the, the new stuff. And the, the issue with this is, you know, same way in a harvest, you're going to um, sow the earth, the, the plants grow, you, you reap the harvest, and it's barren mm-hmm. after that, but then you replant. It's an ongoing process. This is a process of basically loss and then regrowth, loss and then regrowth, as is the, the seasons of life. And I, I'm really getting the, the wheel, uh, you know, the wheel. I don't know if you're familiar with Tarot, but like the wheel of life, it yep. has to do with, yeah, has to do with um, seasons coming and going, rebirth, replanting. And I see good things coming for you. So you know, I like to see okay. it more as, okay, we get the new, we get the rebirth. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. And we are having some storms well, in the production area, so I just wanted to say, sorry if there are any interruptions in the recording. But, um, are there any other okay. things that I can help you with, or do you have any other questions or anything else you'd like to focus on? I, I just wanted to know if um, also my daughter's health would be resolved on a positive note versus a total loss. I feel like her house is going to be, it's going to need a lot of renovations and that's going to be a decision that she's going to have to make. Uh, I just want to, I just want to highlight the fact that there are cheaper ways to do it than she realizes right now. So I think that they're looking into having somebody do it and they need to get a few different people to look at it to offer different ways, but that there could be a much cheaper right. way to do it. And to have right, somebody a came few in opinions. to do it, and they they did it wrong, and they took a lot of money. Mm-hmm. So we need to decide whether to press forward with the lawsuit because they uh, did it wrong and caused a lot of damage. Mm. I'm so, so sorry. That's, that's terrible. That's what we're trying to decide. Yeah, they spread mold through the house by not knowing what they were doing. Wow. So we're you trying know, to that's decide a whether she has you know. To make. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a hard decision. And, you know, that's that's her decision to make. But I really feel like uh, somebody else could come in and take care of that mold for much cheaper than she realizes. Um, okay. We have just a minute left. So um, thank you so much for calling. And I hope thank everything you. works out. Don't worry. The good the good's coming. I promise. OK, well, thank you so much. You're so welcome. Take care. I guess that's it for tonight, and we will see you next week on Thursday at 6.30 Pacific Standard Time, 9.30 Eastern Standard Time. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next week.